Hello everyone, my name is Evi, and what you just saw is the result of my research trying to create a procedural organ system. In order to do that, I used Houdini effects to model the organs and Unreal Engine to render and simulate them. What you're seeing now in screen is a block out of the organs in grey and with the color lines that represents the skeletons that these, these organs have. In order to simulate them in Unreal, you basically need to have a skeletal meshes with specific skeletons that then you can apply physics assets to it and you can create this simulation. In this video, I'm going to do an overview of how I created these organs. It's not a technical explanation on how to do it, but rather a summary of how you would approach a system like this. One of the most interesting parts of this project was to think how I could distribute organs within an input geometry. To do that, I used the BDB toolkit in Houdini, which basically offers you the option to model by volumes. And what I mean by that is that you can see in the screen right now where these different pieces colors are coming from volume distributions inside our geometry. What that means is that we are no longer bound to what geometry we are using as an input. And that's what makes this project really interesting and complex because you never know what you are building from. It's always uncertain. And this uncertainty, as you see in the screen, it creates different shapes by different inputs. So we never know how our organs will look. Through trial and error, I arrived to this distribution, which I called clusters. And basically it's using a combination of noises and volumes that together create a very organic shape-like pieces. And these or organic distributions are completely randomized and procedural. And what that means is that it doesn't matter again what input I'm using, I'm getting a very interesting distribution of what would be places for organs. What's actually happening is that we get this input geometry and we convert it to a volume. I then make it a bit smaller so it becomes inside of the input geometry. With this node that I called cluster pieces, I'm distributing different groups of geometries inside the volume. And what that means is that it gives me the leverage of selecting how many groups I would like to have within the volume. Because this distribution is driven by a noise, I can leverage the parameters of this noise to basically change and generate new clusters. That means that I can select how many groups of clusters I would like and in what frequency I would like to have them. As you can see now, an important part of this project is to make operations per piece based. What I mean by that is now each color represents a piece and what is happening is that it's smoothing them out and creating a spaces between them. This generates unique pieces with unique attributes and the one that is the most important in this project is the volume of each piece. The volume becomes essential because we never know the shape of the input geometry that we are getting. And as well, we don't know what result cluster will become. So we only have the reference of a volume of an unknown piece. And what that does is that allows me to split them by this attribute, the volume, and I can create groups of large organs, small ones, medium ones, and I think that I have another one. And that's what you see on screen right now. You see this change of uh, splitting the groups by themselves and as well um, subclustering a specific gr groups like this. So that creates even more complexity within the given cluster. And when you put them all together, that's what you see. It's a result of all the combinations of clusters that create the basic blockout for what the organs will become. Here, I'm visualizing this specific technique of a splitting pieces by measure. You can see that a smaller and smaller pieces are gravitating towards the right side of the screen in the viewport and the bigger chunks, the bigger clusters stay on the left. So this is basically the method that I use to split these pieces all together. Once the clusters are created, you are left with a lot of pieces. I split them in different groups. And the biggest one I reserve for my favorite organ type, the intestine. Because of its complexity, I really had to do a lot of research on how to model these ones. 
it was really difficult. The main complexity was to create a continuous line that would not overlap with its own points. The reason for that is that when we extrude the geometry from this line, it cannot intersect by itself. Because if it does, when we try to rig it procedurally, it will not work. So that's what you see in screen. You see basically the simulation that generates this continuous line and that adapts to the insides of our cluster piece. What the system offers is complete flexibility with any geometry that we input to it. And what's left then is basically to smooth this line, to resample it and to extrude this mesh. And as I said before, the most important part is that the pieces don't intersect with each other. And that's what I'm doing here, is basically making the tube a bit smaller so that it does not touch each other. And that will create a much smoother result when the rigging process happens. For the group of the big pieces, I used a different technique. I also converted them to volumes and I added some noises to create textures into these shapes. These textures are completely randomized and I just like how they looked. I created some sort of a striped style texture and it created a really interesting look for the big pieces to have. And again, this is achieved by using different noises that Houdini offers you in order to create these shapes and textures. For the medium pieces, I also changed a few things. In these ones, I create them a bit more bubbly. I added the spheres uh, across their surface and it created this shape where you can see now it's a bit more granulated, I would say, and that's how we achieve this effect. And for the latter, these are basically the smallest pieces that are left in the project. You can see I'm deleting the most, most small ones because it can create a lot of issues along the lines and they are even not visible in Unreal. And that basically, when we put everything together, we get this result of all these processed organs and pieces. And then we can compare it with the input geometry that we gave it. And indeed, we can see that it's contained within the input geometry and it becomes a really organic distribution of the organs. Once we have all these pieces, what's left to do is to dynamically rig it, right? Again, as you saw, the process of modeling, everything is really random, so we don't know what's happening. But thankfully, Houdini have us covered with that, because it has a really cool pipeline called KinFX, and it basically automates the process of making a skeletons. If you ever did this process and you are seeing what you're seeing in the screen right now, I'm probably sure that you would freak out if you had to do this by hand. But in Houdini, it's really easy to create this skeleton by just a few nodes in the network. And I'm using the vertex colors of these meshes in order to store data. In this case, this gradient that you see right now and this combination of colors represents different data structures that I can store within the geometry. I store the length of it, the start and the end. And it's really useful for then shading this object in Unreal Engine. This is how the rigging setup looks in Houdini. It's relatively simple and we are leveraging the power of the biharmonic capture node in Houdini, which is made the main bone of this system. And we input these long lines of skeletons and bones. And as you can see, it sort of automatically rigs the whole thing in a very interesting way. And you don't have to do it manually, which is quite amazing. And it's really amazing if we have like endless or unknown amounts of pieces and clusters and geometries and sizes. For the other pieces, the smaller pieces, uh, they are a bit easier to do than the intestines, that's for sure. So it's mainly about creating this line across the shape and having the similar system as you saw with the intestines, it's auto UV, it's uh, attached with a specific vertex colors into the shape. And again, the same system is applied. As you can see, it's basically doing everything for you. It's so good. I love it so much and there's so much you can do with it. It's incredible and I don't even know why there is people right now modeling and rigging manually things. I'm so sorry for you. I hope we can change that in the future. And the last step is, of course, exporting all these meshes and skeletal meshes to Unreal or any engine that you would like. And to do that, I use the tops of Houdini, which are some sort of pipeline where you can automate and create quantities really fast. 
So it was really easy to export these uh, organs in a batch way where I didn't have to do manually for each specific piece uh, for all these unknown pieces that I had for each model. I did have to create a lot of tests to actually pull this one off and basically in Unreal the issue is like skeletons are difficult and to make it so streamlined is even more difficult. So what you see here, these color lines represent the skeletons of these imported meshes and these imported tests basically. And this one for example is a testing testing that I did. And this is the issue I talked about before, where the intersection between the mesh itself creates issues when simulating the organs trying to move, right? Because it sort of goes along. And in this one, exa for example, is different because the meshes are not intersecting with each other, which creates a much more smoother result. For the simulation part, what's actually happening is that in each bone, Unreal is applying something that is called a physics asset. And it's basically a collection of capsules or objects that are primitive meshes that you can apply to these bones. And what that does is that when you apply physics to it, it basically simulates the interaction of these capsules using the mesh that we have as an input in order to create the simulation. And now you can see here is the same for the intestines. The only difference is that instead of like the example, this one just has a lot more bones into it. After I solved all these issues with all these different clusters and pieces and organs, all that I was left with was to create a tiny blueprint that would organize and manage all these pieces together. So basically I created a blueprint that I called Entity, where I can basically load new models and select which model I want to load at the specific time and change the color sheet of the materials. So it's a very simple material. It's nothing out of this world. It's just adding color and a bit of shine. And this is a bit how the blueprint worked. And basically it uses a data table to store all these pieces together and then load them depending on the selection of the entity that we want and setting all these uh, meshes as components that later we can simulate and set and change depending on our needs in our project, of course. So here you see this table that stores all these pieces in arrays that basically will contain the specific elements at each geometry needs and requires and it allows me to tweak a few things without the need of having to do it manually one by one. So by the end I just put everything together. I made this sort of randomized color sheet that attributes different colors to the pieces which I thought was looking good and I think I also randomized some roughness and some properties of the materials. Here you can see the specular changes a bit and this is again like this aesthetic of how it looks when the bones are visualized which helps a bit to understand how it really works because it uses these physical assets of Unreal Engine. So yeah, that's the show. I thought, yeah, maybe you learned something. This is like a tiny test <laughs> I did as an example to show like what you can do with it. Some people ask me why you would put all this effort to put it in Unreal. Uh, I think 
this can show a bit the result why it's just really fun it was really fun to do i think i enjoyed a lot the process i learned plenty it's really a lot of possibilities i see now with houdini and unreal which i want really to explore further i think the fact that it can be procedurally creating a skeletons and rigging them is like insane it's really cool you could uh, still now add like animations to these skeletal meshes you could do so many things that i didn't do but i really thought i had to put an end to this madness and that was the end it's just me cleaning the process <laughs> as you can see in the screen really fun to do uh yeah that's basically it and for what's next i thought it would be really nice to make maybe a few tutorials on how you would do something a bit simpler, not so complex as I have in here, <laughs> because otherwise it's going to be a series of five hours and I don't want to do that. But I thought it would be really cool. I think I'm going to try to make a tiny thing, see how it goes. And I would love to hear and see if you have any criticism for this. I would really love it. I'm also trying to learn how to document these processes. So any feedback would be really appreciated. Thanks for watching and ciao.